hey folks, um, I have decided to start a segment called Waffle House Rules. Um, as a lot of you already know, I work for Waffle House part-time um, as a side hustle. Um, it's a way for me to make extra money to build the lash business. You know, at 43, I decided to get into um, the beauty industry and the foundation of that is doing the eyelash extensions. Um, I've been working at Waffle House now for about six months and I really do enjoy it. Um, I never really would have thought that, but I enjoy the people. Um, but I wanted to start a segment for It's Humans Being because I believe that you can pretty much learn most things you need to know about humans by working at the Waffle House. Uh, and so I figured it would be fun to recount some of the experiences that I have during some of my shifts and kind of talk about you know, kind of what I learned from them and how you can kind of relate them to a much broader perspective on human beings as a species and um, just lessons about life. And I really don't want to say lessons because I don't believe as humans we have anything to learn. I think that everything that we need to know is already in us, but there are certain situations and environments that help us to remember who it is that we really are. <clears throat> so anyway, today um, when I was working, I had a, I want to say... It was a table of 12, basically. So they took up three booths um, in the section. There was about four or five people in each booth. So I want to say that was like 13 people, you know, most of them adults. And their bill came to $118. Now, for a Waffle House, that's pretty big because the average bill when, you know, a family of two comes in, maybe like 20 bucks. So when you run up a $118 bill, and I'm talking like these people ate the most expensive things on the menu, which is the steak and eggs, the Texas bacon cheese steak melt, and even for the waffles, got the premium waffles, the chocolate chip, the pecan. So needless to say, myself and two other um, servers who were training, we busted our ass off giving the best service we possibly could to this group of 13 people. Now, all right, when you have a $118 bill or just in general we as servers usually expect if you give good service you should really tip between 15 to 20 percent so I'm getting all excited um because I'm like okay 118 dollar bill you know I might possibly get a 36 dollar tip you know what I'm saying so I'm super excited I'm like yeah that's really gonna make my day that's really gonna boost up my tips for the day so the guy comes to the register and he has no problem with the with the cost of the bill because, like I said, they're ordering sirloins and everything else. So they're going balls to the wall at Waffle House. And so he uses his credit card and he was like, um, and, you know, there's a, a, a line on the credit card receipt where you can put in your tip. He didn't put in a tip, but he was like, he's like, I just want to let you know I left your tip in cash on the table. So I look over at these three booths that are completely trashed, okay, that I've got to clean up and over under one of the plates at the far end is some cash. I see some cash peeking out. So I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it looks like, you know, quite a few bills. So I get over there and I pull the cash out and kind of had a little mini heart attack. Because uh, once I counted it, I had to like look again because I'm like, I know I am not fucking looking at what I think I'm looking at. Six $1 bills. Okay. So at this point, this is not even, there's only maybe what? 10 no like 20 percent of what i expected to receive and i give great service you know what i'm saying i'm older i love what i do i'm serious about my job no matter what i do i'm gonna give my best so i'm like they really left me six dollars and i busted my ass for them and so you know i kind of had to get over the shock and i'm kind of mumbling under my breath and cursing under my breath as i'm cleaning up you know this massive mess that they leave at the table and i have to give credit to kara she's one of the trainees because she actually okay did a whole lot of the cleaning up but i was still you know bitching under my breath for a while and i was just kind of shook because i'm like you know i really gave them you know my all um, I'm not going to mention the race of the group because I realized that's irrelevant. Um, so there were two things that I wanted to talk about today. One is being cheap and not tipping is not determined by race, okay? There are cheap people of every race, gender, sexuality, nationality, socioeconomic status, okay? And you never know who's going to be the big tippers, okay? Although I will say this, the best tippers consistently 
are other people who are servers, whether they're servers at Waffle House or at other restaurants. Servers consistently give 20% or more if they see that you're a good server yourself and you're actually giving your best to create, you know, a positive, you know, dining experience for somebody. But I started thinking about the bigger issue with this and that is, you know, one, with human beings, you're not always gonna get a return that's equal to what you put in. You know what I'm saying? Um, some people, no matter how good you are to them and how good you make them feel, they're not necessarily gonna return that. But it's not your fault. People not knowing your value is not your fault. You shouldn't internalize it and you have to move on. So today I was pissed off about all the effort I put in, but I knew I had to keep it moving because throughout the rest of the day, there were tw plenty of people who gave you know, 10, 20% or more. I've had people with a $5 bill leave me a $25 tip. Like some people are just more grateful than others. And it may not even be a matter of grateful. Some people just don't think what you have to offer is valuable. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the question is, okay, if somebody doesn't value you, you know, does that mean you still continue to give good service? And I was thinking about the you know, the quote in the Bible about how you do know, you know, you don't cast pearls before swine. So in other words, don't give your best to people who don't deserve it. I'm kind of caught on that. You know what I'm saying? Because on the one hand, yeah, you don't want to give your best consistently to people who don't deserve it. But on the one hand, if you are a person who conducts themselves in a certain way, which maybe just always gives their best in every situation, do you not give your best just because the other person does not value it. So is it more important to dictate your behavior based on what somebody else does? Or are you trying to send a message to the world about the type of person you are? You know what I'm saying? So, and that doesn't mean that if you're in a relationship with someone who's a loser, you continue to give your best and they continue to dog you out. But maybe you know your value to the point where, yeah, when I'm in this, I'm gonna give my best. If you find out that that person consistently doesn't value you, then maybe you go ahead and you let them go. You know what I'm saying? But in general, I think it's more important about the mark you want to make to the world. So even though I was disappointed with the way that, you know, this group tipped me, I still continue to give my best throughout the day. And you know what? I ended up having a really, really awesome day. And then even thinking about the fact that consistently, it's usually other servers who are good to you. I think maybe for me, you know, I started to think about those who um, maybe can empathize with you the best sometimes are those who are in the same situation, you know, as you, but again, that can differ, you know, as well. But I guess at the end of the day, just be who you are. And some people, like I said, aren't going to value what you bring to the table, but just remember, it's not your problem. It's their problem. If they don't value you, what's most important is that you value yourself cliche, but true. And something that needs to be repeated because some of us, even when we know it, need to hear it. So I'm going to say it. If someone does not value you, it's their fucking problem. It's not yours. Especially if someone can't see goodness when it comes to them and know how to show their appreciation for it, you really should feel sorry for them than be mad at them. All righty.